Good morning, internets. Looks like the sun keeps moving on me. Yeah. Alright, I'll just have to lean back for now. Um, Alrighty, so I've, uh, I've recently talked about the retranslation from the Unarmed Fighting Techniques in Samurai uh, Gyokuryu and Koturyu chapters. So here we have uh, Togakure Ryu, Nimpo Taijutsu. <clears throat> I'm not going to get into the controversy around the tradition because that doesn't make any it doesn't serve anyone's purpose. It serves the purpose of some frustrated um, fantasyists. That's that's a thing. But regardless, <clears throat> all that aside, I have translated. Where is my page? Boom! There we go. So I have translated uh, the chapter for Togakure Togakure Nimpo Taijutsu Fa. As everyone knows from my previous work, I like having the Japanese in there. I leave the Japanese in there because as my own practice grows and my understanding of Japanese grows, excuse me, hungry, <laughs> then uh, then I can go back over this and it'll mean different things. It'll be deeper, my perception will change, my understanding of the techniques change, etc, etc. So, in any case, Japanese session, English section. Uh, this particular one actually references some really cool things, such as uh, uh, in the Bonsan Shukai, it describes um, uh, uh, Mu and Mu. <laughs> I forget the uh, uh, the descriptions, but it is in the Station chapter, uh, uh, Station Volume Two, the correct my in Volume Two, which is my, actually my favorite section, to the point where. <laughs> I've also translated that section and made it for my own little notes. This is not for sale. This is not for sale because I have referenced some of the other people's um, efforts or some of the other translators' uh, work in doing that, and it's so amalgamated to my own understanding of things that. Um, well, I'd be hard put to say, oh, that's my translation of Seishin. Yeah, it's got it's got some uh, borrowage from. I can't even see my hands. It's got some borrowage from Anthony Cummins's uh, The Book of Ninja, which I have on the shelf over here. It's got work off of um, uh, Don Rowley's stuff. It's got. I've referenced a few chapters, um, or I've referenced a few sources on that one, uh, and sort of worked in my own because. Uh, that particular book works into my understanding of things uh, in regards to ninjutsu in my own approach to life. Uh, the silly reason why I've got that character <laughs> translated on my wrist, or, <laughs> or not translated, uh, tattooed on my wrist. So it's, it's important to me, but for me that's more like a, a personal spiritual text than it is something that contributes to the history of ninjutsu. So, that's not getting published. Well, it's not getting publicly published. If someone really wants to harass me, I'm sure I can sell you a copy. It's not going commercial, though. In any case, back on subject. <clears throat> so we have Togakuryu Nippo Taijutsu. It goes into some stuff in regards to its fitting into history. Of course, my footnotes, always my footnotes. Um, I decided to make these charts because in the text itself it just shows up as a list which um, I find the uh, Romanized pronunciation of the words have use and the um, and the translation of course gives it meaning you know um, so for that reason I decided to make these charts where I can break it down into Romanjis for your pronunciation needs Kanji, because kanji carries the meaning and it's useless without that. And then the translation, which, I mean, Cloud Escape, Mist Escape, Thunder Escape, eh, they're pretty self-explanatory, but designed to get the brain working. And then, uh, interestingly, in the chapter there, it goes on about uh, the Ningu, the, the ninja uh, ninja tools, uh, Henso Taijutsu, so it's like um, methods of changing the shape of your body. Um, Kyojutsu Isen, so changing 
truth and falsehood immediately in a flash, so to speak. Mitsubishi, that's eye stealing, breaking the nerves, so the element of surprise. Uh, breaking the nerves is like to cause startle. Um, restraint from taking life, that's one of the primary things of Togakure Ryu. Uh, you know, spies and assassins, that's where against taking life. Huh. Well, I'll restrain from it. Yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do. And reference to Kujikuri. Uh, Hatsumi Sensei even lists a couple of the uh, uh, the mantras here. Three of them. It's in Kobo Jizai, which is not unique to ninjutsu by far. It's something that you should find in most martial arts. Heck and karate, they use it to describe the act that your blocks are also strikes, and your strikes can be blocks. That feels really weird to make those movements. <laughs> it's been years. Oh my god, the sun is killing me. Um, so yeah, the ability to attack and defend freely, or in most classical martial arts, it's the ability to attack and defend at the same time. Um, your technique for thrusting should also keep you uh, protected and guarded, and your method for blocking is also your method for uh, striking the limbs and weapons. It's sort of like Jeet Kune Do notion. Um, so it goes on about that. Boom, some other philosophy around these sorts of things. Uh, even references um, five of the principles from Buddhism Fumetsu no Fusei, Shindo no Jikai, Shizen no Nimiku, Shizen no Choetsu, uh, and Komyo no Satori. Um, that's a lecture in its own right. That's uh, it's, uh, it's a long one. But yeah. It's like offerings without being depleted, the true way of Buddhist precepts, natural forbearance, natural transcendence, and comprehending brilliance. I found those to be really important to my understanding of Buddhism. It's almost like the application of Buddhism in daily living. So that's kind of cool. But um, yeah, I call it Gojo. Uh, I've also heard it pronounced Gojo, which is like the picture or the image of the jewels of enlightenment or the treasures of enlightenment. Um, <clears throat> and then we got Taijutsu, Taijutsu to Ninja, uh, the body mechanics of a ninja. Um, it's important to note that in my translation of these things, and this is on my website and elsewhere, um, I define the character Jutsu um, not so much as technique or skill, and certainly not art. I don't get art from that in translation or application at all. Um, but I see it more as uh, science, like the word science, or the topographical word science. So it's like, in the matter of uh, taijutsu, it would be like the science of the body, that is the holistic collection of knowledge around biomechanics, around moving the body, caring for the body, these sorts of things. Um, so it's like, ninjutsu would be the science of perseverance. This also includes the psychological science of it, the soft sciences, as well as the uh, science of strategy, espionage, <clears throat> um, that sort of thing. The information, the science of information, you could say. But again, information, stealth, um, stealing in, those are borrowed terms for the term, for the, the kanji shinobi. Um, so it's... Yeah, it's, it's always weird. I usually translate shinobi as endurance, perseverance, or uh, according to the Bonsan Shukai, um, a sort of sense of valor and what breaks down to make valor. So for me, ninjutsu ends up being uh, the science of endurance. So here, taijutsu to ninja. So it'd be the biomechanics of the ninja. Um, working definition, that jutsu bit. Boom, 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 more of this stuff. Uh, here Hatsumi states that this content will be written just as it is in the manuscripts in the Densho. In fact, I believe he even uses the term Densho. Densho. Right there. Written the same way as the Densho. Written as in the Densho. Uh, in pertaining to Nimpo Taijutsu. Um, let's see. Uh, therefore, it seems that this is why the Great Shinobi Book Compilation, which I translate as Encyclopedia now, but back then as literal, uh, the Bonsen Shukai, uh, 
Yeah, therefore it seems that this is why the Great Shinobi Book compilation of Bansai Chukai remains. Why it's still around, why it's still kicking. Um, it is also amusing to perceive uh, the poison of the book as a rewriting, a homonym for Bansai Chukai. 10,000 battles make for an un ugly conclusion. I, I enjoyed that that wordplay, I really did, because the Bonsen Chukai, which generally is translated as 10,000 rivers meet in the sea, or uh, the myriad of rivers come together, um, the intention from what I see there is that it's sort of an encyclopedia. But like an encyclopedia, it's general knowledge. It's not it's not deep, it's not specific, though with the, the Seishin chapters, I do find that to be rather... Um, for me, at least, I find that to be deep. I don't know if 10 years from now I'm going to be like, really? I thought that was deep? What? <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, that, it's just interesting to think that, like they say, those who speak do not know, or if you have to, if you can't explain something to a three-year-old in a few words, you probably don't know what you're talking about. Um, I really appreciate that because I understood in my own practice and um, even in my own note taking and such, it started getting to the point where I felt less need to take so many notes, I felt less need to learn so many techniques, and I found it more important to sort of narrow it down to the common denominators, the important things, the essence of what I was looking at or what I was translating. <clears throat> and. Uh, and yeah, the Bonsan Chukai is a, a perfect example of someone who, uh, dare I say this, I know I'm going, I'm going straight to hell for this one, but it feels to me like it's some, uh, it's an example where the author or uh, possibly authors didn't necessarily know what they're talking about. They're collecting things. Um, maybe it was altruistically they wanted to bring it together. Um, so as to not lose this technical knowledge, or um, or maybe that was just their level of ninjutsu. I don't know. Uh, to be perfectly fair, I don't really care. What I do find important is that the majority of the content in there isn't particularly useful, not nowadays. It's not, <clears throat> um, it's not ageless knowledge. You don't need 50-some-odd torches nowadays when you have a lighter. If the lighter dies, you should be able to know how to make a torch. Yeah, that's that's it. Do you need 50 torches, or do you just need to understand the principles that make up a torch, an effective torch, and some variations for dealing with wet wood or wet weather, um, for dealing with wind, for, like, to get so knocked up on having 50 recipes that doesn't, that's not practical knowledge. That is not practical knowledge. Um, but to understand the common, denon de the common denominator that makes up an effective torch, that's important. So, it, yeah, that, uh, that sort of wordplay on the word Bansen Shukai really sort of uh, used to raise an eyebrow for me because I was like, but it's huge. Look at all the knowledge. This is awesome. And, uh, and now I'm kind of like, I honestly haven't finished reading it yet. I've had it for like a year now. I haven't finished reading it. Um, yeah, I buzzed through it. I found the, the things that interested me and that was it. But, you know, <laughs> not to say that I'm trying to be a ninja or whatever, but you don't need to know all that content to be a ninja. In fact, I find uh, the Shinobi Hiden or the Ninpiden by the Hitori family to be far more useful for me. I mean, <laughs> Seishin aside, I found the Shinobi Hiden to be far more useful. <clears throat> it's way more concise, it's narrowed down to what's important, it goes into some philosophy, and it goes into some tactics. Um, it even makes some uh, inference as to what sort of martial arts would be associated with it. Uh, you wouldn't just, you know, practice karate and call it ninjutsu. I'm sorry to the, the karate guys in the Black Belt Association that does that, but yeah, no. Tangent aside, um, yeah, they actually make, uh, Hatsumi makes a point here 
uh, not a single practitioner of ninjutsu should be unskilled in taijutsu. I don't, uh, though I understand the placement of koshijutsu and kokpojutsu in regards to ninjutsu as it's narrated by Kasam, by the Hatsumi, by Hatsumi, by um, that that side of ninjutsu lore. Um, I feel like right here it's not necessarily referencing kokojutsu or or koshijutsu or ninpo taijutsu so much as it's saying you shouldn't be unskilled with the body. Uh, I think that's probably um, most important right there. You shouldn't be unskilled with your body. You should be knowledgeable in the science of the body, taijutsu. <clears throat> However, there is great variation in the practice of taijutsu between the different ryugi. So the different branches of, of ninja traditions, there's going to be, well, to reiterate, great variation in its practice. In Togaku Ryu, the enemy stands today. It kind of goes into this sort of funny um, short description of the first couple, um, the first couple kata found in this chapter. Um, yeah. So yeah, um, here I do have photographs of each of these kamai, but um, this was added back when I was trying to make a larger compilation instead of just a strict translation. And because of that, um, I've got the listing here, I've got the reference in my head, I think I even footnoted appropriately. Big my hand tool. Um, yeah, okay. So yeah, I have referenced it and described it here. And then no doubt citations. Yeah, I've got citations in this one. So yeah, that's that's there. And it gets goes right into uh, the Taijutsu Kenigata. So um, usually we, we translate it as Ukemi. Ukemi is like a break fall or whatever, but it's the uh, receiving body or the receptful body to be able to receive information with the body. <clears throat> um, I say that, but then the first technique, Kaishidori, is like literally rolling into an enemy and messing up their suigetsu, their sternum, or their diaphragm. Kenagari, so a lot of these techniques are facing an armed opponent while you're not armed. That being said, um, we have techniques like Itodoi, where it would only work with some form of concealed weapon. If you've got, well, this is a pen, uh, pen but you've got a short blade or a knife, you need to be able to go from Ichimonji, shum, receive the weapon, go from there. Uh, or ultimately, like in, uh, in Koturu, there's, uh, the, um, there's a description where an individual fell to the ground unarmed and they actually used their hand to uh, catch an incoming blade. So it hacks into the metacarpals and, uh, and wedges into the wrist. Boom, and they use that as their opportunity, almost like a jute. They use their hand as a jute. Caught it, went in for, for the rest of the fight. That's pretty intense. They would have probably permanently lost their hand. The massive amount of damage to the nerves and everything would have, wah, wah. And just think if this technique was, was off in, in a particular way, it could just slide out of the side and and might not have given them the opportunity to survive. Can I sit forward yet? Kind of. Uh, there we go. Now I don't have to shout so much. <clears throat> Alrighty, so, yeah. Going back to this, boom boom, Itadori. So it doesn't actually reference it here, or I don't think anywhere in the chapter, but obviously this is a technique with the Shuko. So you catch the the blade with the hand just like in the videos uh, <clears throat> cool stuff cool stuff I used to practice that a lot and then I started to look at it as though I wouldn't necessarily have Shuko so much as um, as maybe just any old small weapon maybe a kunai maybe a short sword boom you start learning to to move the exact same way using the same biomechanics to catch a weapon and go from there Lots of fun, cool stuff. Yokugiri, so again, Mutidori styled things. Um, 
here it actually describes very briefly on how to cut in with the uh, with the short, uh, with the sword and mess up your opponent rather nicely. It's neat. Um, quotes from other Hatsumi books here. Oh yeah, I know this gets into um, almost parkour like stuff, which is kind of cool. Um, I've had some of the local parkour guys ask me, "Does ninjutsu have parkour of any sort?" I always say, "Yeah." It's the art of escape. It's the art of fleeing, and that's the reason why parkour is there in the first place. So, there you go. <clears throat> Shinobi guy, she got the. So this is things like uh, climbing over walls or vaulting over walls, um, being able to uh, vault onto a wall and then using it as a platform for attack or counterattack or escape. Sorotobi, so this is uh, climbing a tree. Uh, it keeps making references to uh, um, to shuriken or tepan. Uh, Yokonagari. Uh, what's this? Oh yeah, facing uh, an opponent. Yeah, so this gets into using Mitsubishi uh, blinding powders or other distractions. And, I mean, the the dentro says Mitsubishi, or it says blinding powder. Or in this case, uh, throwing a stone. Um, but you know, I've come to understand it as not just blinding powder. It could be anything: dirt, leaves, rocks. Uh, a rock, it could be a, a short weapon or a small weapon you could be throwing at the opponent. You're looking at a distraction that will surprise them and give you the opportunity to escape or uh, or just generally, um, yeah, it's a distraction. Uh, preferably an effective one, a powerful one. Yeah. Big distraction. <laughs> um, Ushiro Nagai is uh, facing three opponents with uh, with Daito and Yari, long swords and, and spears. Then we get into the Hiden Gata, which is kind of fun. This is facing multiple opponents and it's got some variations to it. Itunage, so this is throwing your sword at the opponent, how to throw your sword at the opponent, which it doesn't detail much, just uh, when facing certain death, throw your sword from the left side straight into the enemy. So from the left side, like, you could be in like a, a Tosui no Kamae sort of posture and you throw. Or even from a sheath sword, you throw it right from the scabbard. Or throw the scabbard. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, Senba Nagi, so it's describing how to throw um, uh, throwing stars or throwing blades. Kyori Kaishi, this is, uh, this is actually redundant at this point, but how to cut in with the sword. Um, Sutemi, this is kind of an important one, a little bit of tactics on dealing with group opponents. And then citations. Alright, so that doesn't actually get into the Santo Tonko Gata. Um, my copy of the Japanese for the Santo Tonko Gata, which does not show up in Hatsumi's book, um, is, well, it was given to me in confidence, so I don't have the privilege to make that public. Um, it's one of those things where you just, you don't even ask. But um, I also know my access to that isn't complete either. Um, but I can briefly show it off here. Boom, so, ta-da. And I've got a big note in case someone does uh, does get the opportunity to read it and they understand where it's coming from, that it's not complete, etc., etc., etc. So it leads in, and it was handwritten too. I had a heck of a time trying to uh, trying to transcribe it to Japanese to work with easier. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, it describes carrying shuriken, concealed blades, blinding powder, um... Uh, mentions the Shinjin Ichinyo uh, Maki, um, which describes the five elements in the escape forms. Uh, it goes into the actual fighting methods with the wrist lock that everyone knows. It looks kind of like a dance. Uh, Kasem explains it better as it's a fundamental movement pattern. Learning uh, Suriyashi. Kubi Suji Tonso, it's grabbing from the back of the neck, and you deal with that. At the Kome, facing an armed opponent, you're striking in. Kote Uchi, striking the hands. Uh, maybe you don't got, uh, I'm not going to read over these all right now. Tactics for using blinding powder against multiple opponents. Um, lots of footnotes, lots of citations. So, yeah, that one's not going to be public, but lots of fun anyways. So, uh, yeah, that's that one. I managed to stretch this on for 24 minutes. I know ninjutsu always has a lot to talk about because there's a lot of misnormer um, uh, discussion around it. But yeah, long story short, this is another one that's available on my ResearchGate page. Um, 
and this is another one that's taken me quite some time to work with. If you guys feel that it is conducive to your training or your interests or entertains you, however this sort of work uh, fits into your life, then um, then it would be super awesome if you guys could um, stop by my Patreon page and consider uh, becoming a patron for my work. Um, a buck a month helps. Anything helps. It really does. Um, yeah. I don't know what else to say. I've just rambled on for 